Good morning, and thank you for attending police headquarters. My name is Constable Carolyn DeClute, and I am here today to introduce Superintendent Sean Noreen from 22 Division. He will be updating you on a shooting investigation from December 30th, 2014. Superintendent? Good morning. Uh, I've got some good news for you this morning in regards to our shooting back on December 30th of 2014. Um, the Toronto Police Service at this point is requesting the public's assistance in locating a man wanted for attempted murder and firearms related offences that occurred in a shooting in the Etobicoke area on that date. It is alleged that on Tuesday, December 30th, 2014, at approximately 2.46 a.m., the victim in this case and his friends had left the House of Lancaster Adult Entertainment Club located at 689 The Queensway. While the victim was waiting for a car to pick him up in the parking lot, the identified wanted suspect, Mohammed Yusuf Omar, date of birth December 30th, 1990, shot the victim twice, striking him in the head and the left calf. Omar then fled the scene. The victim was taken to hospital via emergency run in critical condition and underwent multiple surgeries. The victim continues to suffer from the effects of this incident. The 22 Division Criminal Investigation Bureau and Major Crime Unit began an investigation several months ago or following the, immediately following this shooting into the shooting and with the assistance of the community has now identified Mohammed Yusuf Omar as the shooter and as now the wanted party. Subsequently, a Canada-wide warrant has been issued for the arrest of Mohammed Omar and we are asking the public's help in locating this male. He is believed to frequent the Etobicoke and Rexdale area of the city and also may, be, may also be in Fort McMurray, Alberta. This male is considered armed and dangerous and anyone with information is asked to contact police at 416-808-2200 or Crime Stoppers anonymously at 416-222-TIPS or also online at www.22tips.com. I will take any questions that you have at this point. Uh, that is still under investigation in regards to what their relationship is. Why do you think the shooting happened? Uh, at, the, at this point, from our investigation, and I can't discuss too much because it's ongoing, there may have been a conflict at the front of the club at that point, and then whatever words or whatever actions uh, took place may have escalated into the shooting. So it's something that escalated very quickly, not like a long-standing beef from what you've been able to No, talk. no, not at this point. What makes you think you may be in Fort McMurray? Uh, we've had interaction with Fort McMurray and police out there and back and forth with the RCMP and there's belief that he is transitioning back and forth between Alberta, Fort McMurray and Toronto. Was the suspect at any point inside the club as well and do you believe that he had a gun inside the club? Uh, we do believe he is in the club. Uh, as to whether he had the gun in the club or not, that has not been determined at this point. Uh, security measures were in place, we believe, that kept that they were being screened but that is all part of the active investigation of this does, does he live or work in Fort McMurray part of the year? Uh, we do not have those details as yet. Superintendent, why did it take you so long to come up with the name of this suspect? It's been eight, eight months now. It's been eight months. We had, a lot of, we had to collaborate or corroborate, I should say, some information and recently some additional information through the investigation and the cooperation of the community has come to light, which has given us more strength in moving towards a Canada-wide warrant being issued for this. We, he was a person of interest prior, but we did not have enough evidence at the time without consul, uh, consulting with the Crown to move forward. Otherwise, we wanted to make sure we got him on the charges and the actual um, shooting that took place and what we could move forward with. Detective, have you been able to get in touch with people that, that know the suspect, that are related to the suspect, and reach out to them and try to get in contact with them? Well, that's what we're hoping for today. Uh, the Canada-wide warrant was issued uh, late last week, so we've been reaching out to all our assets out there as well as family. Uh, we are hoping that he turns himself peacefully. Uh, to resolve the matter, he has now been identified and we'd like to bring, have him come forward and turn himself in. Uh, also, that is where we are looking for the public's assistance, is if they identify him now that his photo is out there uh, Canada-wide, is that somebody reports on his whereabouts and that uh, they contact police, do not try to talk to him or approach him themselves and bring him uh, forward so that uh, we can deal with him. What's it like for the victim these days? Uh, without going into his personal life, uh, he is still suffering uh, from the critical, uh, critically from the results of his injuries. Um, like I said, I do not, do not want to speak on the victim's behalf because uh, the mother and the family are also involved, so I'd rather not disclose. It's just... Does he have brain injury though? Is he in a coma? 
coma? No, he's not in a coma. Uh, he has suffered from uh, brain injury. Yes, he has, but I do not disclose his medical condition. This is, this is a brain injury he's going to live with for the rest of his life? At this point, yes. There were, there were paid duty officers at that venue that night. Yes. Um, similar to an incident recently at Music. Uh, this was the third shooting incident uh, in a number of years at the House of Lancaster. Yes. Are paid duty officers still allowed there at that club? No. We do not, no longer have paid duty officers at the club. What, why, was that, why was that decision made? Uh, that was a decision that was made based on uh, speaking with command, um, the officers being deployed at the location, the requirements, um, if it facilitated um, in any way their job was strictly for the security. It was a uh, entertainment adult club at Mondays and Thursday nights at the House of Lancasters, almost is like a urban club night, where it would be frequented by a number of um, particular individuals known throughout the city for their involvement in criminal activity. So uh, at this point, with our with the pay duties being authorized there, and a lot of this other information coming to light through the investigations, we found that uh, we should not have officers at a location that is being frequented by a number of parties known to us How and persons of interest. That, well, that was made almost immediately after. So, but these events go on Mondays and Thursdays. Events where you know that. Since, police frequent. Since, yeah, since December 30th, there has been no other significant events at the club because we've used our on-duty resources to enforce or for police enforcement in the area on Monday and Thursday nights. Um, we use the social media aspect or end of things. We use our community contacts. We use the community in the local residential area as well to assist us and keep us informed. So any activities that do take place, we are well informed of and we address our, or adjust our policing resources for the area as need be. So there's been nothing in that area, um, and a lot of that uh, credit, credit has to go also to the community that uh, has come forward to assist us with information. Can you tell us more about this accused? Any known gang ties? How has he been known to police, if at all, in the past? Uh, he has uh, had previous contacts with the police, but nothing uh, over uh, a number of years. So we do have, but other than gang ties, uh, nothing confirmed as yet. And like I said, the investigation is still ongoing. And there may be several other parties that are involved in this who are accessories to the actual shooting. Have, have, do you believe that the witnesses that you needed in this case have been cooperative or speak to what you got from the witnesses? Yes, I do believe the witnesses have been very cooperative. Uh, like I said, it's been very difficult at times where we have the witness of the community coming forward in fear of retaliation. Um, that's why we often point towards Crime Stopper or tips for the simple fact you can re remain anonymous, but it greatly investigate us. And although it took several months for this information to come forward, it's assisted us now in moving forward with actually putting out the Canada-wide warrant for his arrest. How did you initially identify him as a person of interest through video surveillance? Through video surveillance, and uh, we, at the time we had forensic evidence that was present, but we needed to corroborate the evidence because there was a lot of evidence with a lot of persons of interest at that point, we had to narrow it down. And like I said, particular information which I cannot disclose allowed us to now move forward at this point, which puts him as a person, as the prime person. So uh, he is, he doesn't have gang ties, as you're saying, he's known to have gang ties. I cannot confirm. Sorry, I might have said that. Yeah, no, I can't confirm that he does have gang ties. Yeah. Uh, no, I cannot confirm that he has well, gang ties at this point. Previous contact with police. Yes. He's known to police or he has a criminal record? He's known to police. Take one last question. Have you recovered the gun that was used? Not, I cannot disclose it at this point. Okay. That's it? Okay, thank you very much. That concludes today's conference. Thank you for attending. Like I said, I'll leave this picture up and uh, release is coming shortly.